went through Ariel Castro's mind inside his interrogation. Joining us now is Dr. Lori Stevick Russ. And uh, as a psychologist, um, what is your reaction to the tape, what you've seen of it? Well, you know, the, my first thought was, this is somebody who we with rational minds are looking at this, trying to make sense of something that looks really bizarre, irrational, delusional at times. I mean, again, the, the, his affect being so inappropriate, eating pizza at one moment, crying at another. I think us looking at that as the lay population thing and that just doesn't make sense but really when you think about it from a pathological perspective somebody who really has that psychopathic quality it's always about a little bit of a game play a little bit of that control so if you watch the tape closely there's a little bit of that like I'm gonna give you a little bit of information then mm -hmm. a kind of a taunting back and uh, and you saw that playing itself out I think in that interview with the FBI agents was it a game when he called Amanda Berry's mother and said he had her daughter and that she was okay and yeah you know it's hard to know because of course we you know not having ever having actually evaluated him right. or knowing the details of that but based on what you, you saw there yeah I think again in the context of what we're seeing we certainly know that people who can be very sociopathic who have very poor um, ability to relate to anybody mm -hmm. else is really devoid of any kind of empathic caring this to me looked more like a little bit of the I'll throw it out there and mm -hmm. let's see what happens more of the again the same kind of taunting like you could have caught me on video I did call and say she was okay but then I hung up it wasn't in an empathic reassuring like don't worry I'm taking care of her even though that would have been unhealthy right. he didn't hear that piece of it he, he did talk about being afraid of getting caught so he clearly knew what he was doing was wrong absolutely absolutely and vacillated in this belief again that really somebody who is a serial abuser like this rapist kidnapper it really always boils down to control and power and so it really the, the comb combination of that with that delusional we were all living very harmoniously I mean one interview piece he talked about that as if somehow they were all one big happy family this was my wife he referred to her and then again twisting in a different way of but I was in control that's yeah. why the locks on the doors very quickly doctor in in earlier uh, tapes we heard he said he was abused as a child and that um, he had a sexual addiction and he blamed all of this on that what is your quick take on that? I think, again, anytime there's a history of abuse, we know that it has an impact. To what extent is always person-specific. But to me, I think that was more of the, I don't really know how to explain my crazy behavior, mm -hmm. so let me find a couple things to tag it to. That's not to say that people are, who are abused, it doesn't influence behavior. But in this sense and in his context, it seemed a little bit more part of that sociopathic, mm -hmm. manipulative game. All right. Dr. Steve Russ, thanks, thanks for giving up a little bit of your Friday night to be with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Still to come, it is a football frenzy for all kinds of fans. We're going to run through some...